I see people coming in. Good morning, everybody. Um, maybe you can see it from my camera. Welcome in Barcelona, or somewhat Barcelona, virtual Barcelona. And um, also welcome in this uh, open personalization with Apache and Nomi in the GDPR era session. My name is Nick Feinhoff. I'm the CTO at DropSolid. Um, and I've been around in the, the Drupal ecosystem for over 14 years now. Um, have been heavily involved in the, the search API ecosystem, or even before that with uh, Apache Solar, uh, one of the questions in the poll, uh, as you can see. Um, if you haven't seen the poll, please fill it out. Um, it might be uh, interesting to see at the end of the session um, if you're curious to use one of the other technologies um, after we went through this um, somewhat tutorial of personalizing in this uh, era. Now, without further ado, um, I'll continue. And uh, what's on the agenda? Uh, on the agenda is um, these four things. Um, so let's take a look at what's happening today. Uh, certainly with the COVID situation, um, we are in a global market, but it doesn't mean that there is one single audience. Huh? Everything is digital, but not every end user is the same. Um, also how to measure success of personalization. I saw some really interesting sessions yesterday about personalization, um, about doing Netflix style personalization or personalizing just within Drupal. Um, but then like the, the biggest question always is like, how do you measure if what you're doing is correct? Um, a big part of this presentation will also be a demo um, using Apache Yonomi and showing you how to do this yourself. Um, so we'll show you a, an actual website um, with uh, configurations and trying to segment and trying to make personalizations. Um, and then I'll um, give you like a brief overview of what we did now um, and uh, see like how can you actually go from this thing called uh, DXP or go, go from CMS to this thing called DXP, um, also known as Digital Experience Platform. Now, to give you um, just the, the brief intro, um, this is a, a video that we show um, to, to prospects uh, within DropSolid to explain what personalization is. So the DropSolid Experience Cloud enables you to optimize the customer experience, resulting in higher conversion I mean, rates a, and a, better a, customer satisfaction. Context, eh? Let's so, have a look at how this works. We have our anonymous surfer searching in Google for flower piece. There we go. Well, look at that. The first result she gets is Florista, a website with a fully integrated DropSolid Experience Cloud. Our still anonymous visitor is browsing the homepage. She's scanning through the themes of the new collection, looking at the featured products and taking a closer look at the upcoming workshops. While she's doing all that, the personalization AI is using his magic. By using machine learning, the AI identifies different segments of visitors and tries to fit our visitor in one of those segments. On the Florista website, there are three specific segments. There's the B2B prospect, the online shopper, and the explorer. He or she is now looking at the latest inspiration from the blog and is showing an interest in the first article. There's a great step-by-step -step guide on how to make your own flower arrangements. And there we go. The AI has identified this visitor as an explorer. That's how long it takes. Our explorer gets to the end of the blog article and fills in a form to receive a free download. Great! Now our explorer has a name and we even have her mailing address and consent to start sending newsletters. Our anonymous visitor isn't that anonymous anymore. Let's have a look at what information we've received. It's very brief, so, so much her name is Sophia, Sophia Mertens. Her email address is sophia.mertens at gmail.com. And we know that she's an explorer. We even know what she looks like from the picture connected to her Google account. The log shows when she first visited the website and what actions she has performed. And now, the fun part. Let's put that information to good use. The next time Sophia visits the Florista website, the homepage looks slightly different. We know she's an explorer, not an online shopper or business, so the content has changed to reflect that. The subscription form for the workshops has been put at the top of the page, just the way Sophia likes it. As an explorer, she's eager to learn and get creative herself. She's not looking to buy a flower piece, not at this point at least. How great would it be if Sophia also received newsletters tailored to her needs? 
Oh, there's a new email. Let's see what's in it. Wow, workshops, tutorials, DIY packages, exactly what she was looking for. Now that's a great user experience. Okay, so the drop what, we, what we saw is indeed like just um, kind of a, um, an end user uh, experience on how to create personalization or how to like have experience personalization. But then the biggest question is always like, how can I create this? Uh, how can I create this using the, the technologies that I have in front of me and maybe even with existing sites? Now, before we get to that, um, we have to understand that there's more than just Sophia. So a global market doesn't mean one audience. And this is more or less the journey that uh, an end user follows throughout um, a brand uh, that's online. And it could be that um, he or she comes in from social media, goes to um, a blog, then goes to the website, maybe interacts with a chatbot, or then actually browses the website a bit more a couple of days later, um, gets um, in touch with um, a newsletter. So there's a conversion happening. Um, again, goes to the website, maybe email, and then ultimately um, maybe uh, there is a purchase. If it's an e-commerce or the goal has already met, you have informed that end user. Um, so for example, governmental websites have KPIs to say, okay, we have to inform as many people as um, we can within a specific segment. This is similar uh, to that journey. So let's take a look at, at Sophia, what we saw from the video. Um, so this is kind of the profile. And what's interesting is that this is somewhat related to personas. And when you're actually building websites, um, there's, there's a team often called strategists um, or information uh, architecture, uh, depending on how you uh, look at all these uh, challenges. Um, and then from that exercise, there's um, four or five personas coming out, and then you start to build the, the whole wireframes and, and everything around those uh, personas to make sure that everybody uh, within that persona is happy. Um, that's ideal, but those are a lot of assumptions to take, um, not even knowing if all these personas actually um, like are real. Um, or maybe you kind of like have made an assumption that might not be true for specific personas. So let's take a look at Sophia's journey and um, we'll get back to those personas in a bit. So first, uh, as we said, their social media, um, the amazing marketeers set up uh, this campaign with Instagram and uh, Facebook uh, to lead people to the website. Um, and then we actually got into the activation phase where um, like Sophia went to the website and clicked on these items for workshops or for blogs. Now, um, the my important part is the conversion. Uh, there is a form on the website. Um, and in Drupal terms, this is often done with web forms. Um, but then that data stays within Drupal. Maybe that's fine. Maybe there's different uh, solutions. Uh, but ultimately, it drives around conversion. Um, so perfect. And then after the conversion happens, there's an email uh, that was sent uh, because, hooray, uh, um, we got your um, information, you received your whatever package or tutorial, um, and the end user is happy. What you then often do within a brand is do the nurturing. So the person actually gets back uh, to that website and you try to make sure that that person feels confident and um, like warmly embraced and that you know what that person did with your brand or with your company. Um, this is a very similar interaction uh, as if you would have in a store. Right? So you walk into a store, you are greeted by the person um, that uh, is trying to ask you, can I help? Maybe there follows a purchase. And um, ideally in a very small store uh, where you really love to get back to, that, that salesperson actually recognizes you the next time and gets a, to a friendly conversation and you start to build up a relationship. Those are often the stores where you love to go back to. Huh? So why not do this also online? And that's the whole idea behind um, this personalization part. Huh? It's not to be creepy. Um, it's really to help the end user. If you're not helping the end user with personalization, yeah, then uh, maybe that's not the, the right thing to do. Um, and then also nurturing, you can see the, the page on the left is different from the page on the right. Uh, also in the video, the workshop form on the top 
right or top left from the right picture um, is at the top, which uh, it's not featured on the, the default page. So this is personalized content, but we have many more, as I mentioned, uh, personas uh, are uh, not just limited to an explorer. In this case, there's also Mark, which is an online shopper or also Fatima, an online shopper, but maybe different interests. Uh, could also be a B2B provider. So there's many, many more. Um, and uh, as I explained, uh, today's consumers, they expect this personalization. You expect it in a store. Um, so you also expect it actually online but uh, it cannot be creepy. So that's why we have to use data uh, to really build these personas and add this emotional and behavioral components. I didn't invent this phrase. Um, this actually comes from um, a marketing blog, really interesting one. The source is uh, added uh, below. So yesterday um, I saw a really interesting presentation from uh, Ashley Hazel and, and Lara Fernandez about uh, smart paragraphs. And um, there's already ways to, to do this kind of personalization within Drupal. Um, but as they also mentioned, and you can see that on the top, uh, it's, it's limited to um, just the website itself. Uh, so the whole cross um, channel behavior, as I mentioned with newsletters or even uh, coming in from social media uh, is not included there. Um, and um, maybe you're wondering, okay, but how do I then do this? Um, this is not to uh, say that smart paragraphs is not a very good option. It is. Um, but as you also can see from the screenshot from their presentation, there's a lot more that uh, you might be willing to do. Um, so before we get into the demo, um, there's also another part that I'd love to um, share with you in uh, to figure out how to measure success with personalization. Um, this is very tricky. Uh, um, because if you start to show one variation instead of another, how do you then know if the person um, was actually happy with uh, that variation? There is um, in certain tools, um, like these success measures are measured by just clicking on the variation. I don't think that's a very good way of measuring success, um, but I'll show you what the, the journey towards these measurements are. Um, and Maybe many of you do this already with your current website. So this is a calculator that within Drop Solid um, we use just to see, okay, how is a website performing uh, based on specific KPIs? So, okay, these, uh, these KPIs are, are here and um, bounce rate is here, average time on page and the loading time, maybe if it's e-commerce, a cart abandonment, and then ultimately there's a, a score, but this doesn't really measure these different personas. So uh, ideally we need to have all these measure like metrics and then do a little matrix and have all the uh, personas in there. Okay, well, we can't do that uh, right now. So maybe let's try it in a different way. Uh, let's see about website performance. This is Hotjar. Hotjar is also often used um, to say, okay, where are people clicking on? But even here, we have the same problem. Um, it's where we can click on all these variations, but what happens if we have different variations depending on the person browsing the website? Suddenly, these, these heat maps are no longer very interesting to understand the different variations or the performance of these different variations. So this is fine for the global audience. This is not fine um, if you have different personas uh, with specific changes. There's also Google Analytics, but also Google Analytics has the same problem. You cannot differentiate the specific KPIs that you have there based on the different personas that are coming in on your website. Um, so as you saw, and for maybe someone interested more in information versus someone interested into buying something, um, they will have different goals set in Google Analytics. And often this is a single dashboard that was added um, but doesn't really show the, the actual details of what's happening on the site. So um, what we um, will show in, in the demo as well, and what we did is that using Apache Unomi, um, creating segments and then also exposing that on the website, you can also share that towards um, yeah, different technologies like Google Analytics, uh, but not limited to Google Analytics. Also Matomo, 
um, which is one of the answers in, in the poll, um, it can be used to send these segments to. And what you then get is something like this. Um, in this case, and sorry for the, the examples there in Dutch, um, they come from, from a, a customer case. Um, you can see that depending on the segment that came in, we have a different conversion rate. Um, number one mentions a foreign um, holiday person, and number two mentions inland holiday person. Um, and we can see that the inland holiday person, person has actually a lower conversion rate. Um, so from all the goals that we've set in Google Analytics, we can now segment them in the different personas or the different segments, as we call it also in Apache Unomi and in often personalization software and see what the measurements are for these different uh, segments. You can hear that I'm using different words for actually the same as, so there's persona, there's a segment, um, there's all, like a couple other words that can be used. Um, this is by intention because it's not always very clear if uh, a segment of your website is actually also a persona. Yeah? Um, a segment could be a country segment. That doesn't mean that everyone from that specific country is a persona. Um, so uh, be careful with using those two words. Um, and then from also uh, an actual e-commerce site, uh, you can see that the, there's like something strange here happening. People that actually get into a blog first or information um, have a higher conversion rate um, and actually a higher e-commerce conversion rate. So more dollar value um, than someone going in direct sales. Um, it's not exactly more dollar value, but you can see that um, if we try to promote the, the blogs and really like um, put a bit more effort into getting people into our information uh, pages or into the blogs, the, the success of getting a higher dollar value um, will be a lot higher. So interesting stuff to have. But now uh, maybe the, um, the items that you were waiting for, uh, show me the, the real stuff, the nitty gritty technical details. Um, and that's exactly what I'll do. What we'll show is a demo of, of AI-based personalization using Apache Unomi. Um, and what we'll do is to capture this online behavior into profiles and customer profiles. And um, we'll try to discover the intention and then personalize this website experience for each visitor uh, within Drupal. So for the example case, um, we need a website and um, the Dropsol platform allows you to create websites. So um, let's just take a, a quick look at that. And that's also one of the reasons why I added GitLab. Um, so we start a website, uh, perfect. Uh, so we have GitLab uh, within the Dropsol experience clouds. Uh, you can see that's all in here. And then um, ultimately there is a live website coming out. And this is usually the phase where everyone is already in. Uh, so you have a website on a platform, could be the Drop Solid platform, could be uh, Acquia or Platform SH or Pantheon or self-hosted. Uh, um, that's fine. And then um, as an end result, we get the Drop Solid website. Um, it's not that important that this is the Drop Solid website. This is more, we eat our own dog food and this is the, the website where we um, yeah, show this technology with um, in these kind of demos. Um, and Fabian, I see your question and I will for sure answer that. And that's one of the, the top notch features from this uh, piece. But to collect information, um, for example, I'm selecting this. Uh, you can see that I'm, I'm not actually going uh, into page views. So I'm just collecting intention, uh, clicking on, oh, stay in control of code content data. Um, and okay, just browsing the site, perfect. What we then see, um, and we go into the interface of uh, Apache Unomi, this is something that the Dropsol platform added on top of it, but it just has direct, um, um, a direct API with Apache Unomi. And so similar to Apache Solar, uh, Apache Unomi is just an API. You do need to provide an interface on top of it, um, but I'll show you some um, like ingredients where you can build this yourself with as well. 
as you can see uh, um, in this case, um, this is what my interactions were. Uh, so stay in control of code, content, and data. Um, there's a couple of things that I clicked on on this English page. And um, if we take a look at uh, all the profiles that are happening right now on the DropSolid site in the last seven days, um, we can see, okay, um, probably the last one that came in was this profile. Um, I won't go into too much depth here, uh, maybe in the Q&A on like what you're actually seeing, um, but just having that information, that, that's not enough. Eh? So um, it's, it's great that I can see people are clicking on things, um, but how do I now get meaningful segments out of that information? Um, you could also think of, for example, coming in from an Instagram campaign or from a Facebook campaign and that you then add that to a profile and then uh, try to personalize based on the campaigns that people came in from. Um, so, okay, let's try to make these personas or segments. Um, and um, I'll show you a small manual example. Uh, this is basic segment creation, test segments. And um, we can see that from all the, the events that came in, there's a lot of properties. I hope you can see the dropdown. Um, if you can't, uh, I'll just explain how you can see browser properties, also touch support, um, but also, uh, for example, the form submit uh, identifier or from the, the actual HTML identifier uh, and a lot more. This is okay and this is interesting, um, but this is still very, very manual. Yeah? Um, so in order to reduce this manual stuff, we can um, try to do some data science. Now, the data science that uh, we do in, in our case is that we try to um, build groups and the, there's an algorithm that we developed based on all the data that actually goes into um, Apache Unomi and tries to like separate that into different buckets. The, um, the technology used behind this algorithm um, was found in scientific papers. Um, and the interesting part of, of this is that you don't have to give it uh, a learning uh, data set. Eh? So you just say, and I'll show it here in the, the overview. You can say, give me four groups. Uh, show me the 10 frequent words that you can see in these interactions from the past 14 days. And then what we then see um, is an end result, something like, uh, like this. Um, let me refresh this and it shows a bit better. Okay. So we now have four word clouds and we know um, that these sessions mathematically are different from the other sessions with a big enough division um, that their behavior is different. Uh, so that's more or less the science behind it. Um, but there's interesting things that we can see here as well. Uh, so you can see on the top left, there is uh, probably English sessions because our website is multilingual. English sessions that have um, content clicked or content interacted with that says about value, delight, time, uh, user studies, the transformation. This very much sounds like a business persona. On the, on the bottom right, uh, you can see uh, words like React and or native, um, and then also, yeah, Drupal Jam, um, maybe, uh, yeah, search and a couple of other things. This is very much related to technical audiences. Um, and that's also exactly what we, we do. We can then say, okay, transfer these into you know me segments. Um, and then we get personas or similar segments, similar to specific personas. You can see we have a business decision maker persona and a technical decision maker persona. This is important to, to remember for the, the rest of the demo um, because um, what these people will see is what I'm showing you now. And so we go back to the DropSolid website and there's um, a Chrome extension that can help you show the different variations. So we already prepared the, the website to show a different variation based on different segments. Yeah. So there's a business decision maker, um, but let me show me what I see as a technical decision maker. And maybe um, you, 
didn't see it, or maybe you did, but it, it actually changed this. So for the technical decision maker, it says take full control over digital experiences for um, maybe community. Let's take a look. Um, it says something about Drupal SEO pitfalls. So we're trying to show them different content based on the interactions that we can see that are happening on the site. Um, and yeah, that's important. Now, how does this work in Drupal? Um, and there's um, a Drupal module called You Know Me. And let me show you here with a screenshot uh, how that actually works. Um, what you do in, in Drupal is that you configure the, the module and tell it's like, this is where um, the You Know Me API lives. And then uh, after you configure this, you will get a, a dropdown. Now the dropdown is uh, available in um, blocks um, or in paragraphs. And also using a Drupal core patch, it's available as a, a layout builder um, yeah, region or like a, a block uh, condition. Technically, it, it uses conditions behind the scenes. Um, so it's also applicable to any other type within Drupal that um, is able to use uh, conditions, but not restricted to that. Um, in, in a more technical sense, it um, just says access denied. Now, how does that work? Um, just add my uh, power here. How does that work? Um, the JavaScript that is added to the site places a, a cookie with the value of the segment and is then transferred into Drupal as a variation. And so uh, we do vary by the value of that specific segment. Um, and that means that there is a different variation for each segment in either our reverse proxy, could be uh, a CDN uh, or varnish, or um, directly goes to Drupal. And in that way, we also allow cacheability to happen uh, for each of these different variations. So um, if you want to write custom code to say, um, I want to have a different um, like, uh, input filter for this specific view to, to for example, show different recommended items uh, depending on these segments, then that's also a possibility. And so each of these segments that you create have a different render um, end result. So I'm happy to answer more questions about that um, in, in the end. Um, but I also um, showed you that there's more than um, just the website. There's also these things called newsletters. Huh? So how do you get these specific segments into newsletters? And for that, we use a technology um, or the, the tool called Motic. Motic is an, an open source marketing automation software. Um, and it, it's been really great in this case because it also offers a, a JavaScript API to send these segments to uh, and also um, a REST API. Now, um, let's take a look at uh, a profile. Um, and for GDPR purposes, I'm not allowed to show you any other customer profile than myself. Huh? Um, so this is a profile of myself uh, from yesterday. And you can see um, what's happening here in marketing automation fashion, um, that I received an email, um, that I was added to a specific campaign, um, but also that I visited the website. And so also here, we keep track of specific touch points um, and see how does this specific user um, interact with uh, our brand in, in the digital space. Uh, so that's somewhat cross uh, channel. Um, but the interesting, interesting piece is actually in a custom field called uh, this personalization segment name. What we're doing is that the, the result of this segmentation from Apache Anomi after this whole um, yeah, rule based system, either with the machine learning system or manual, um, gets back into the browser and then gets also sent into Motic. Um, because we have this information now in a readable form in Motic that I'm an applicant, um, it's probably because I was surfing on websites with the um, uh, open positions that we have, um, we're now able to actually create a campaign um, where the newsletters are personalized towards the intention of the end user that was browsing on our website. And so we are, are way beyond what MailChimp is able to do. 
because in Mailchimp we have no idea on the actual browser um, interactions that that same user did. Um, now, and how does such a campaign look like? Um, and I'll show you that here. The campaign looks a bit like this in, in Mautic. Um, so we can see, okay, the, based on the, the language that we know the person has, um, and that's based on, on the form that they submitted, um, we ask, is it a, a business segment? Oh, send the business email, et cetera, et cetera, um, until uh, every uh, segment option was actually fulfilled, or um, if none of them were true, we send a default newsletter. Um, this has been really great because we can now also send personalized emails and then actually follow up if the, the conversion or the, the click-through rate of these newsletters is higher for specific segments. Uh, so um, that's, that's interesting stuff. Now, um, maybe you, you heard me say uh, uh, Drupal uses Webform, but how do you get actually this data into Mautic? Um, for that, we actually don't uh, recommend using Webform but we uh, have a, like a Drupal module called um, Mautic Paragraph. Um, and what it, it does is it allows you to add a specific paragraph, but not limited to a paragraph. We recently added also the block type and um, it allows you to add the specific block or paragraph and just select a form from within Mautic. The data from the end user directly goes into our marketing automation um, we know there's a conversion. We do have a profile using Apache Unomi, and then these three items are all connected with each other. Um, but okay, that's not enough. Um, I also showed you the analytics part, and this is the, the real-time analytics part of the DropSolid site uh, using these segments. Um, and it's loading here. Now you can see um, this is the, the website of, of DropSolid. And there's a really nice um, distribution between a technical decision maker, a business decision maker, applicants and community. Um, and there are some, some interesting uh, metrics here. Uh, as you can see, we have fewer applicants um, over the last month um, than we have technical decision makers or business decision makers, wherever they click. Um, but the conversion rate for these applicants is higher. Uh, most likely is because they fill in a job application form. So that's to be expected. Um, here we see that the conversion rate from the technical decision maker is higher uh, and it's actually lower for business um, minded people or at least uh, for less technical words. Um, and that could mean that our website is too technical. So it could mean that um, if we change some of the wordings towards people that are business decision makers, that this conversion rate could also increase. Um, and we can also see that um, we can correlate this with the goal completions that are on the right. So very interesting stuff. And this goes way beyond just clicking on the variation to understand if your variation works. Um, so that's more or less the demo that I wanted to show. And I'll get back to the presentation. And I hope I have some time for Q&A in a bit. Um, so as a recap, Apache Unomi um, is used here as a customer data platform, CDP. Uh, maybe you've heard this. Um, and um, it's, it's designed to do exactly this use case. Yeah? Um, what we now showed you in the demo is that uh, no longer we have a single global audience, uh, but we actually have different variations, a different website, and a different email based on the audience that came in. So um, I'll do a quick recap also here. Yeah? So how do you go from a simple Drupal site to this fully connected thing in these different components? Um, this is what Gartner mentions, what um, a DXP should be able to do. And we can see a lot of items that I covered, I like analytics, experience, presentation, orchestration, personalization, search and navigation discovery. Drupal is already very strong at using uh, search API and solar. Um, and then a lot of these other items um, are also important, but those are the main things that were lacking. Um, so in the demo, I added uh, marketing automation and a CDP um, using Mautic and using Apache Unomi. Um, and this is how you can do this yourself. Huh? Um, let's take a look. Okay. 
So um, what we saw is that there's marketing automation by Genomi, Drupal, and the Unomi Drupal module. Um, there was the Mautic form embedding uh, or the Mautic paragraphs module. There was the Drupal uh, distribution from Drop Solid that does the best practice. And then the GDPR part, uh, because we uh, all manage this ourselves, all the data is first party data. The cookies are not uh, based on a third party uh, domain um, and uh, won't be blocked in the future by, for example, Safari or uh, Firefox or Chrome. Um, and on top of that, um, if you use the, the cookie compliance or the EU cookie compliance module, um, this uh, can also be prevented to load in from the start. So uh, you are fully GDPR compliant on that front. Um, we also showed you the, the AI segmentation, which is a drop salt specific part. And then um, I, what I didn't show you and what you can add on top is Matomo Analytics, um, which is actually uh, an alternative for Google Analytics uh, to also avoid third party tracking on that front. And then if you um, want to go crazy, there's also an SDK for Node.js and uh, the SDK for PHP. Now, um, with that, I want to leave some time for questions because I saw some questions. Um, this is um, all this, what I showed you is available from a managed service point uh, at DropSolid uh, in a fully open way. Uh, so what you develop or what you have as data is yours. Um, and as a recap, this is what uh, DropSolid does. Um, and if you're interested in applying this for one of your customer cases, please talk to us in our booth um, we are available the, the whole day, and now I'll leave some time for questions. So let's start with the first one of Fabian. Um, how do you do caching and personalization, especially when visitors are not logged in? Um, hopefully, I explained this already a bit, um, but we use um, the Apache Unomi tracking for any visitor, anonymous or logged in. It doesn't really matter. Um, and as, as long as there's a segment that was uh, identified, it will place back a small cookie uh, with that segment name or the multiple segment names that that uh, yeah, session um, was um, yeah, tied to. Um, so in that way, we have a different cache variation coming back from Drupal. Um, and we also allow for the cache invalidation and, and the full power of Drupal to work um, even uh, in uh, a full, fully decoupled way. Um, that I saw that was also a question, um, but because you can send that cookie also uh, like along with the REST API of uh, Drupal, um, it is not limited to um, just the rendering of Drupal uh, if it also includes HTML, which is a key difference from many personalization softwares that are out there um, and um, like allows you to go fully crazy. Then is this type of personalization compatible with GDPR? And where do you draw the line of relevant information versus collecting too much? Um, that's uh, a very interesting question. Um, and that's something where you have to think of uh, when you start to collect information. Um, the, the default tracking script allows you to track anything, um, but you are able to program this yourself and like what you collect, what you don't collect. And then also what, comes in into a CDP, um, which is the Apache Unomi part, uh, can be redacted. Um, this goes a bit beyond this session, uh, but Apache Unomi has an API to say these specific fields are actually personal information and should not be long lived, or um, you can even say, uh, I don't want to collect them at all. Um, Apache Unomi has a consent framework where it also allows you to store the um, the agree button that people click and when they clicked it and also which level it is. Um, I'm happy to show you like more details on how that looks like maybe in the boot in the Q&A uh, part after the session because we'll be shut down in five minutes. Yeah. Um, and then uh, also um, there was a question from Florent Torregrosa but I'm not sure if I already answered this or uh, if you want me to, to show you um, in, in more depth on the website itself. Because I think that's pretty similar to the question of Fabian. Eh? Um, so uh, 
Florence, feel free to put this into the discussion um, if this wasn't answered, and uh, otherwise I'll, I'll show you. Okay. Um, and then uh, Brian Gilbert. Um, okay, so Florence, I'll, I'll show it in, a, in here. So how are you able to segment anonymous visitors? Let's take a look in incognito, okay? Uh, oh. Sorry. Okay, so if we go to dropsolid.com, we are um, first met with um, the specific cookie banner. Um, one second, because I lost the uh, on air platform here. Ah, okay, here we are. Um, and uh, for the sake of the demo, I'll accept all cookies. Um, now, if I uh, browse to a specific page, I'm still anonymous. Um, and maybe let's see if we can actually uh, get to somewhere and try to see if we can get into a segment. Um, and then let's see what actually happened. Yeah. So here in the network tab. Nick, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we can't see your incognito. Um, oh, you can't see screen. it. Okay. No, no problem. Uh, new share. Let's start to share. You should be able to see it now. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. So what I did is I clicked around a bit and now I'm at the network tab. I didn't do uh, anything crazy. I also saw a GDPR pop up and I approved everything. Um, I clicked on this text, the best open source digital experience platform. Um, and I see that there's uh, a call that happened to um, Apache and Nomi. Um, the call that we did is directly to Apache and Nomi. And um, what you can see is that I'm, I'm sending all the, the data that I have about this session or about this interaction uh, to Apache Nomi. What I received back is that um, already there is a profile segment name coming back called Business Decision Maker because I clicked around. Um, now, if we take a look at the cookies for dropsolid.com, we can see that there's a cookie called DSVeryML with a specific segment identifier. Now, this is placed on the dropsolid.com domain um, and will be sent towards Drupal or Varnish. And within Varnish, it's actually configured to be a variation or cache variation. So depending on this value, Varnish will see, ah, I need to show a different cache variation. If that variation was already cached in Varnish, it will just return back whatever was in Varnish, allowing you to be very performant. Um, and this is, yeah, the same for um, decoupled sites. Eh? So hopefully that clarifies um, clarifies it a bit. Uh, if not in the boots, happy to dive in a bit deeper. Um, and then um, to try this out locally, um, there's not a Docker image or resources which could be used, but uh, Drupal, Mautic, and Unomi you know, can be downloaded. And using all these components that I showed, you should be able um, to to put uh, a cake uh, together using those ingredients. Um, I'm happy to work together with people to, to get like an uh, end user demo um, ready. Okay. And then um, I do not need training data. That's correct. Um, but you do need live sessions tracking from the website. Uh, yes. Uh, so um, you do need to attach web analytics or session analytics, but you do need to add the tracking uh, script of Apache Nomi to the website. And I think with that, my time is up. So hopefully this was useful. Um, and I'm happy to answer any other question that you have in the boot of Drop Solid. And please also fill in the, the form after the session ends. Thank you, everybody.